Ko Z14CAB te waka re re rangi, ko Brisbane te awa, ko Cloud Catcher te maunga, ko Alani Evans Aho. I'm Lani and I have the privilege of being part of Cohort 4 of the Edmund Hillary Fellowship. And I also have the privilege of working across two different uh, areas. Social enterprise through Thank You Payroll and the Cheese Cartel, uh, and philanthropy through my work with the Vodafone New Zealand Foundation, the Peter McKenzie Project and the Thank You Charitable Trust. And our, the philanthropic work that I'm involved in is all about creating more equity. It's about making sure that all of our children and young people, our tamariki and our rangatahi, have access to the resources and opportunities that they need to thrive. But today I wanted to talk about a concept, an idea that I hope that we will weave through our conversations uh, over the next couple of days at New Frontiers, and also an idea that I hope will weave through the work that we do beyond this as well. And that's the idea of working to enhance the mana of everyone that we interact with working to make sure that people leave our presence and our interactions and our solutions, feeling like more of themselves, feeling stronger in who they are and in their own power. Because I think that sometimes in rooms like this, we have the opportunity to have amazing conversations about amazing things. Uh, but also sometimes in rooms like this, there is knowledge and optimism and privilege. And that means that the people that we're creating solutions for and the communities who are impacted by what we do aren't always represented here. So I wanted to give you two examples. Um, and firstly, I want you to imagine you're going to a food bank. You're going to a food bank because you need to get some kai for your whanau, you need to get some food for your children. And this doesn't define you. It's a transitory moment in your life. Imagine you go to the food bank and instead of getting a box of food that might be full of things that you don't know how to cook, that you can't cook because you don't have pots and pans, uh, that you don't like or that are culturally inappropriate for you. Imagine if you went to that food bank and instead it was set up like a supermarket, where you were given a budget and you were able to stroll the aisles and choose the food that was culturally appropriate for you, food that you like and food that your children will actually eat. The outcome of these two scenarios is the same. In both cases, your children have food in their bellies. But the feeling of it is different. In the second scenario, you can walk through and you can make choices for yourself. As a food bank, they're saying to you, you're an adult, you can still make good decisions, you're just in a moment in time where you need help. And I think behaving like that, making those small changes to how we engage with people, helps to enhance their mana, helps them leave feeling more of themselves, stronger in themselves, and more powerful in their own decisions. Another scenario, take the philanthropic sector, where I spend most of my time. Imagine if decisions in the philanthropic sector weren't made by people like me, but were instead made by people in communities that are, are affected by the funding, that are affected by the decisions that are made. What solutions might they come up with? How might they identify their own problems and take action? What would they do that we can't even imagine from within this room? Again, this is an opportunity for us to think about what would it mean to give away our power, to share it with the people who we're trying to support and trying to help, and do that in a way that is positive and wonderful and values-based. So I think if we take this as a principle, a core principle of what we do, and if we think about it in how we talk about people, how we take action and how we move forward, we'll get to social change faster, because we'll be doing it from a person-centred approach as well as a practical one. Kia ora. <laughs>